Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today in the Civic Cost Wellness topic. Today, uh, we are at the Grandview at Chisholm Trail, which is a Civitas senior living community right here in Southwest Fort Worth. It is assisted living and memory care. Been here a little over a year, got open in COVID, so kind of trying to catch up from that. Um, but we're super excited to be here um, and excited for this topic, a very important topic that I think affects everybody, right? <laughs> so of course, if you don't know, February is National Heart Month. Did I say that correct? Yes. Okay, good deal. So it's National Heart Month. So I'm honored, again, my name is Levi Malone and I'm an Area Director of Business Development in our DFW market. I market for eight of our senior living properties that we have here. Civitas is a senior living ownership and management company based out of Fort Worth, Texas. So we're in our roots, we're excited to be here. Uh, today I have the pleasure of getting to be with Emil Blaine. She is the executive director of the American Heart Association, the Tarrant County chapter, and Michael K. Wood, and he is the board, board, chair, chair, chair of the board. board. Got it, I was close to it. So we're excited. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for supporting Civitas in this initiative to educate our viewers, mm -hmm. residents, and families about something that is, of course, very important to all of us here. Absolutely. If each of you want to um, tell me a little bit about your role with the American Heart Association, um, and of course, the significance of American Heart Month. So thank you so much once again for having us. We're super excited to be here. I mean, Neil Blaine, as you said, uh, the executive director, and the executive director's role is to just make sure that we are um, really looking at what are our community needs, especially as it relates to anything um, related to heart disease, stroke, and um, cardiac arrest. We want to reduce hypertension. We want to make sure that everybody has everything they need in order to um, have longer, healthier lives. And so my job is just to make sure that we are doing all of those things and working with our staff in order to make sure that we put out as much as we can about information, about how do you reduce your risk man, your, your risk for a stroke or heart disease or cardiac arrest or reduction of hypertension, increase uh, your ability to eat food uh, that's healthy for you, drink water, all the things that you need to do in order to have a heart healthy life. Making sure that we are working with foundations, other community partners in order for us to just really make sure that we're doing all those things that we can do to raise awareness about heart, heart disease and stroke. Mike? Yeah, she missed the number one thing that she does, and that's keep me in mind. So, <laughs> and um, that sounds like a big job. <laughs> it is a big job. So as board chair, my role really is governance of the board, um, setting the strategy direction, and really, quite frankly, taking what is a national organization and making it personal at the local level. And so um, we spend a lot of time talking about um, not only fundraising, because that's clearly part of it, uh, but also how can we um, move into the community and present ourselves as useful and valuable to the community. You know, the importance of the month of February really is for us to come out and say, do you realize that heart disease affects everyone? Everyone right. has a story about heart disease. They know someone or they're, they're personally affected. This gives us a chance to come out and educate, to share the stories, to share the survivor stories, to share the research, to share the initiatives and strategies that we've got going on. Wonderful, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, I've already learned so much and we've just started. So I think, you know, as common, you know, common folk, we've all heard of the American Heart Association, but that's great to learn, you know, about the specific initiatives y'all are taking, even simple, you know, down to how hard it was for, you know, I think about our seniors specifically, how hard it was for them to get their blood pressure checked. Absolutely. You know, everything went virtual. Right. You know, if you can't, if you don't have somebody in your home to help you, mm -hmm. how would you be able to check your blood pressure without having a cuff or anything? Right. So, you know, so that is, thank you for educating on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Absolutely. So a question that is very important to me, but I think really everyone, especially, you know, in Civitas, we're, we take care of seniors. Yeah. Um, so. Our, I'm sure our viewers and myself, I would love to know as well, how common is heart disease in the senior population? Well, I think um, what's evident is the older we get, um, the more prevalent it becomes. Um, the difference is whether it affects you or not. And so uh, oftentimes, 30% uh, of the time, the first time someone knows they have heart disease is they have a heart attack. Hmm. 
uh, which is kind of scary, uh, to think that it's that sudden, that acute, uh, that you recognize it. But everyone probably has some form of cardiovascular disease as they age. It's just what happens to the body. But if it doesn't affect you, it doesn't change the way you breathe, it doesn't cause a heart attack, uh, then it's just something that you have to be aware of, um, it's possible. So, interestingly enough, I think most people think this is um, simply, this is really a myth, that this is really just an old person's problem, mm. or an old person's disease, but the reality is heart disease hits people at young age um, just as much as it hits at the old age. The old age is what we're familiar with. The young age we don't talk about very much because it's, it's one time here, one time there, but there are a lot of people that are living with heart disease from birth. Um, but as we grow old, our bodies tend to degrade and, and cardiovascular disease is one common form of, uh, of an, uh, an outcome. The, uh, I think the other thing that we also see is there are a lot of precursors to cardiovascular disease and, and issues with your heart and things like diabetes, uh, blood pressure we've already talked about. These are things that while not necessarily associated with heart disease, are right. absolutely contributors to heart disease. So I think it's a broader conversation that needs to be had uh, that is that starts at a very young age, uh, but continues all the way into old age. And to me, if it's good for someone who has heart disease, those recommendations, whatever they are, should be good for someone who doesn't have heart disease, because eventually you may end up with heart disease. So why not get started on having healthy lifestyle choices and doing the things that you need to do uh, early in your life. I think, um, you know, for the, the folks in the senior living environment, if you don't have heart disease, you don't know you have heart disease, that's good. It's probably a good thing. If you have it, you probably already know what you need to be doing. And those that don't have it, probably ought to look to the people that do have it and model their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Because they're probably going to eventually, at some point, run into those situations where they're going to have to is heart disease because of lifestyle or normal aging? And you kind of touched on this each boat, but if we can elaborate a little bit about that, I know that's obviously a very common question. Absolutely, so a little both. Uh, and that's the, that's the one thing that I think is also a myth as well, is that, oh, if you, if you, you know, exercise, you eat well and all those things, eh, then you won't have any of it. But aging also affects that as well. So. As you, as he said earlier, your your body starts to degenerate as you're getting older, and that, that so it's a combination of both of those things that really play a, a huge role. Can you mitigate your risk? Absolutely, you can mitigate your risk by moving, keeping, you know, e eating good food, drinking good water. Um, moving is is I mean I've said that it's, it's it's super key, and so critically important for you to stay active, um, re reduce your stress. Uh, where, where necessary and needed, uh, and however you do that, uh, and really to work with others who are in that same vein to do the same kind of things, who you surround yourself with a lot of times, will affect how you're yeah. eating, right, and how you're doing things in life. And, and, and I'll, I'll amplify on that. I think if you take the lessons that you get from those that are in cardiac rehab, yes, it's diet changes, yes, it's movement and exercise, but it's also this component of stress and stress mm -hmm. reduction. And mm -hmm. I think that's overlooked tremendously. And I think if you look at um, studies around longevity, uh, you, you see that social integration, the getting with other people, communicating in community is super important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's really great about environments like this is that you offer that as well. So you have exercise, you have good food, but you also have a community where people aren't isolated. I think that's one of the lessons that we we struggled with, quite frankly, in the last couple of years with COVID, is that um, it was very easy to be isolated, and yet it's so important. In fact, if you look at the ranking of things that are important to preventing chronic disease, like cardiovascular disease, social integration is the top. It's above exercise. It's above really way above. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's overlooked, and it's probably a big message for everybody to kind of take away is reducing stress, but not just reducing stress. Because, okay, I'll just breathe and I'll, I'll be no, my, blood pressure, my blood pressure will come down. No, it's, it's really about having authentic relationships with other people. It's super important. I, I'm just so glad that I get to be here and get to be with y'all because I've already learned so much. I, I mean, you know, you hear your entire life.
eat right, exercise. I have never whole heard the socialization aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important, especially coming out of this pandemic that we've been in, not to continue to talk about the pandemic, I feel like that's all we talk about, but just the importance of socialization Absolutely. at all ages, you know, at a very, from coming out of the womb all the way, yeah. you know, to our seniors, exactly. you know, how, how we physically are not created to thrive in isolation. That's That's right. Right. It, it highlights the, the more holistic view of cardiovascular disease, right? You think of the heart association, you think of heart, and that's all you really think of. Okay, how do I keep my heart strong and healthy? But when you start to break it down, you see things like transportation. Do you have access to get to transportation that can take you to the grocery store? What about mental health? Mental health is huge. Do you have sidewalks in your community? Do you have easy access to parks and places you can get outside? Do you have community places where you can gather? All those are really part of heart health, but most people don't think about it that way. Right. They think about the acute circumstance of now I have a problem, now how am I going to deal with it? And this is, I think, where the Heart Association has done a tremendous um, pivot over the last couple of years from, it's not just about the research of what to do when something happens, and what happens when you go into the hospital, and you know, what about stent care, and what about open heart surgery, and all those kinds of things, but rather, how do we prevent from happening in the first place? And how far back do we have to go? And they're now starting to talk about, it's, it's actually before you're born. Right. It's educating your parents about how to change their behaviors before you're even conceived, and that once you're born, then they're following that path as they raise you, and that you continue on those paths well into, you know, before you become a village. Right. Well, and that leads me into my next question, which we've y'all already done a fantastic job at, at touching on, but what can our seniors, but specifically, you know, us as a whole, what can we do, you know, to, to be more heart focused? Um, and, and so what I've heard you say is, you know, increase our socialization, um, you know, however that looks, depending on, you know, staying safe, um, but increasing that, then of course, increasing, of course, the diet, you know, making sure you're being conscious of what you're eating, um, increasing your activity, whether that's just getting outside, doing something, um, you know, I think is so important. Um, are there any things that I missed? So, Levi, I, I, I put it in a simple phrase. Okay. Eat, move, connect. I love that. Eat, move, connect. You'll think about diet, you'll think about movement. My son's a physical therapy assistant, and I was talking to him about actually having this conversation, and, and I was talking about movement and other things, and he says, motion is lotion. It, it's, it keeps your body smooth and doing the things that it needs to do, not just for your joints, not just for your muscles, but also for the internal organs, including the heart and, and the lungs. And that's really, really important. And it, by the way, this isn't about um, super high intensity exercise. Right. It's just about movement. There's people that live really long uh, don't actually exercise like we do. They don't go out and, and do you know, weightlifting or, or go run marathons. What they do is they introduce simple movements into their everyday lives. And by the time they finish the day, they've moved probably more than most of us do in our sedentary lives. So, yeah, eat, move, connect. And I would just add motion is motion. Motion, motion is motion. motion. There you go. And know your numbers. Right? Yeah. Pay attention to your numbers. And I think that's good for every age. For the seniors, movement's probably one of the bigger challenges. Of course. Right? Um, it, it's hard. Yeah, you got to get up, you got to move. But by the way, you can move in a chair. Right, right. You don't have to to be on your feet. Um, you can move in a chair. You can do things that can keep your, uh, you know, your uh, heartbeat up a little bit uh, and and keep things flowing. And I always say laugh a little. Okay. You know? Because uh, there's nothing wrong with a little joy, and it actually just releases once again stress and those types of things, but laugh some and you know, those those types of things and get together with other people. It really does help you feel better. Awesome. I, I think those that are in a community like this should reach out to their kids and grandkids and say, I want you to come visit me. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, I want it I want that interaction. I need that interaction. So can we schedule that interaction if it's too difficult in your daily lives to just happen in mm -hmm. uh, on the moment to schedule it in because it's important. 
Yeah, and wonderful the opportunity to do it on. But they can't necessarily physically come here because they got you know COVID issues or you know travel issues or something like that. FaceTime and mm -hmm. Duo. And That's Zoom. one thing we learned, right? Exactly. We all had to learn exactly. about virtual technology. And exactly. Exactly. So the use of that, I thought, was great. My my father lives in New York, mm -hmm. and so I'm able to Zoom with him. Yeah. Uh, and we had Zoom Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. we, you know, last year, I guess it was, we had Zoom Thanksgiving, but it was because we couldn't travel so much in that concept. And I do the same thing with my daughters. You know, we interact on those types of things. So it's a great opportunity to use technology to still, once again, do that creativity, uh, have that creativity to, to connect with other people. Wonderful. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, I appreciate that. Is there anything that you feel that we've missed that maybe you need to, either one of you feel our viewers need to know? Well, the American Heart Association is here for everyone. Uh, and if you ever need any resources, please do not hesitate to go to heart.org. Okay. Um, and of course, next this coming week, couple of weeks, we'll be at Go Red for Women. Uh, our, our luncheon is on February the 10th. We have a heart ball on April 23rd. And then, of course, we have our heart walk, uh, which will come up, and Cycle Nation will come up. So heart walk is in September. And then, of course, Cycle Nation is coming love to have any and all of you uh, to come and join us and so we thank you once again for this opportunity of course yeah i, I would just um summarize maybe the myths a little bit because i think that's often lost um this isn't just an old person's problem right um it's everyone's problem you just may not know it yet uh it's not just a men's problem um, men aren't the only ones that have heart attacks this is why we have a wonderful event called Program for Women, where we focus solely on women. And, and so I, you know, I think, thank you for the opportunity to share uh, about the Heart Association, but more importantly, just about heart health. I mean, I think we all want to live as long as we possibly can, and unfortunately, heart disease is one of those things that slows us down. And if we can focus on it a little bit, uh, just a little bit, okay, every day, uh, I think we can do it. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate that. So to all of our viewers, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Emil and Michael. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, again, just educating me already so far. I know our viewers will learn, you know, at least one or two things. Um, so we appreciate that. Again, my name is Levi, and I'm an Area Director of Business Development for Civitas Senior Living. Please let us know if you or someone you know could benefit from senior living. We'd love to connect with you. Please like our video, share it on your social media platforms and let us know if there's any questions that you have. Please look up the American Heart Association, support their events that they have coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you.